Okay, so again we have a situation where one configuration and another system that works over there doesn't work over here in, in SUSE. You know, the, we have configuration files that actually aren't transferable between the two, and I'm not really used to that. I'm wondering what exactly is causing me not to be able to... DSA? Did I use DSA? Dip, DSA. My god, SDA2. So here I am whining about nothing. I bet you it'll probably work now. Yep, it worked. Okay, so I mounted it. So basically check your spelling before you bitch about how the system has changed. <laughs> okay, so that should be mounted. And what that means is if I were to change directories into Windows and do an LS, it would show me everything that's in there. Okay, so I want to get go back and I want to just do a scan on this. And basically the way to do it is A B scan minus S and then you just type Windows, and it's going to do all the subdirectories in there. And if you find something, it'll pop up a warning. Now, I didn't see what it said in the beginning there, so um, we'll find out. I think it should at least find something, because uh, I, I did get one warning while, <laughs> while I was on the net. I probably have been compromised, so let's see what happens. And um, that'll be... And I think it happened yesterday. Stupidly, uh, I was at the, I think it's just trying to. I was just at the blackhat.com site just to watch some of their presentations uh, to get some more information background before I did all this. Um, now I noticed that when I was doing the scan in my Linux subdirectory before I mounted Windows, they would, it would give me a lot of answers that would say, and you're probably going to find it, this program is earmarked. This program is earmarked. And basically those are programs that are going to end up, it ends up being um, skipped because of um, whatever options are loaded into the, the configuration file for this program. Now whether that's concerned or not, uh, you know, who's to judge? I think here we have media OS users default nethood and it's skipping that. That seems to be a symbolic link. Now it's taken a little while here to go through my temporary internet files and guess what? I'd probably expect that that's where I'd find something or something if there was anything in there. Um, now usually in the back when I did it before it would bop back at me and say it found something. But so far I, I've not seen that. So this is about as exciting as having as watching the paint dry on the side of a building. But um and I still have yet to find that one um presentation that was done over it was at Google headquarters and a guy had come down to Google headquarters to talk about uh safe uh or poison search results or safe filtering or something like that. And I think I just looked for black hat under Google videos and I think maybe it came up pretty shortly and I'm trying to figure out or I looked at one and it it, it led me to something else. I mean, I'm just doing this while I um, black hat's a term for a for um uh, uh, <laughs> unabated uh, internet criminal. They're they're only there to do things that are wrong. Um, and so the, the the Black Hat Conference is a group of security professionals that listen to these people that seem to know an awful lot about doing things you really shouldn't do, and they make their presentations. And the security professionals find out about how certain things work, and then that ends up. Um, being presented, and it's a little cat and mouse game between the between the two um, All right, and this two division, two parts of the security. Uh, one being that um, I'm looking for uh, 
trying to find this thing. You know, the good guys and the bad guys, the black hats and the white hats, supposedly. And the gray hats, who knows what they do, right? Uh, I'm not going to find that. It's just scan still seems to be going and um, <laughs> let's see if I can find that thing it was really it was a good presentation it brings a little more into the here it is black hat spam SEO this is the one so I recommend you watch this one as well and this goes in line with yesterday's presentation um, English isn't that great, but he does a pretty good job of telling you like it is and what happens. Hopefully I'll get the first blurb in here, and hopefully I won't go over 20. Let's, I wonder how... Uh, the Ziskiller security team has a blog at research.ziskiller.com. Uh, you will see several, like, two to five posts a week about web security, and um, several posts about uh, black apps, black ads spam SEO. If you have any question after this uh, presentation, now, you can always email me. I'll at, turn this uh, down for a second. Now, one thing that he doesn't mention, doesn't go into that much, he just says, well, they, they redirect you to another website, and that website um, <clears throat> will install some malware on there. He doesn't really... The whole focus of this presentation here is just how prolific these poison search results are when, when people search and how they get these poison search results to come up to the top. But what's missing from the puzzle in his presentation and how his presentation relates to the other presentation of the professor at UC Santa Barbara is that the reality is, is that these poison search results install the software, the malware in your system that allows these botnets to run and that's explained in one of the reports about one of these botnets that someone either infiltrated or gathered information about. Uh, for popular search terms and uh, creating it in a way that they will rank high in Google search results. So to get a list of popular search results, they use uh, Google Hot Trends. Google Hot Trends uh, display every day okay. the list. So you see what he's saying there? He's saying that you know Google Hot Trends basically is a list of the most popular searches. They use Google Hot Trends to create uh, fake web pages on these compromised machines. And they have another machine involved with malware. So when people click on the search result, it goes to the first compromised machine. That compromised machine redirects to another compromised machine that has the, the malware on it. And that downloads over back to your computer. And now you're a zombie. And you're going to be one of these two things. as uh, up-to-date to Google to have a better ranking. And so now that they have all their spam pages, they need to um, feed them into Google. So they create additional pages that are uh, links to these uh, spam pages. So this is an example of a spam page. That okay, so he's going to get into some details here. Let's see how my scan's going. It's still looking through Lacerto 07. And there is, there's an updater in Lacerto that... Um, has been detected as a virus before, but basically it's just an update for Lacert itself. Unless, of course, Lacert shipped a, a piece of malware in the row 7 program. <laughs> Nonetheless, I don't have it activated anyway. In the search result, in order to redirect them to uh, malicious sites, and the way they uh, differentiate between a uh, uh, search engine crawler like uh, Googlebot and a user is by checking the referrer, so they check if the request is coming. And the referrer is the little signature that the that your web browser leaves every time you go visit a page. Every time you visit a page you look at a little image there is a fingerprint of your IP address, um, what browser you're using, and what operating system you're running when you go there. And so every single time so that gives them information that they need to just to just you know to go ahead and infect you. So to do that, to create their, their uh, spam pages, they actually don't use their own website. They hijack some legit legitimate websites, and uh, to not be detected by the webmasters, they don't modify the existing pages. They add new pages on the website. Um, they try. They always try to hide their uh, spam pages. So you will you will see spam pages using. So it's all social engineering. It's first the first 
part of the social engineering is they get you to click on something that has the malware on it. The second part of the social engineering is hiding the fact that the the computer is compromised where the web pages are. They also um, hide the fact that you're compromised. It's a whole big scan here. And it still seems to be held up here on this Lacert thing, but I guess it's going to start moving on now. And I'm going to see how far I am. Maybe I should... St I got a few more megabytes, 20 more megabytes till this gets too big. Let's see if this guy has anything more interesting to say. No link, no CSS, uh, no style sheets, no images, just content with a bunch of dates. And um, the, the sentence... That's the fake result I was talking about. Just a bunch of sentences that they got from the Google search result put together around one keyword. But now the spam pages are getting a lot smarter. Now, the other guy from UC Santa Barbara gets into this, and he says that uh, the, the, the botnet program that he was dealing with called Torig would download not just an M uh, MTV web page that looked exactly like MTV, but they would download um, a web page that looked like their bank web page. And it would have a keystroke logger in there. It would gather the data of the username and, and, and login and the information in a very concise form for them to use later on to, to steal. So now that they um, have created their web page, uh, they have uh, a script on the, on, on the hijack site that uh, redirects user to the malicious site. And again, they do it based on the refer header. They do it based on the user agent, so they may check if you are actually using Internet Explorer, Firefox, or any of the regular browser. And they can even use Flash and JavaScript to detect a fake browser from a real browser. Um, this is an example of a... Okay, so he's getting into too much detail here. But Now, what makes it so difficult for uh, IT security people to, to stop is that these web Page, the location of these web, these fake web pages change frequently, and it's also probably most of the time is an innocent person, so they can't just go, oh, you, you know, go find that person that had that fake web page and prosecute them. It's not like that because the user is unknowing. Okay, I'm gonna stop.